G'day folks, Nat here from Living Entertainment. And I'm Daniel. Today we're going to talk about system synergy and sound signatures. Firstly, we'll talk about system synergy. Now that can be something that's incredibly difficult to get your hand around, but it also can be pretty simple. What most people think of system synergy as is simply, do these components sound good together? And quite often it's as simple as that. Other times it can be a little bit more complicated. I.e. if you've got a huge room and you're trying to put a small speaker in it with an underpowered amplifier, that system synergy will probably actually not work within that room, but in other rooms, it might actually sound pretty good. So you also have to take in consideration the room you're going to put your system in. But that's just an example. Today, we're mostly going to cover sound signatures and we'll get to that a little bit later on in this video. Now, what exactly creates system synergy? Well, basically, when we talk about synergy, what we want to do is make sure that the speakers aren't too bright or too dull or the amplifier too bright making the speakers sound more bright than they are. It's sort of like a balancing act or if you like baking a cake, you want to make sure you've got the right ingredients there to get a good result at the end. And that's what we do here at Living Entertainment is essentially curate systems together to make them sound just right. Now, just because the system sounds right for, for John doesn't mean it's going to sound good for Larry. We are work in consultation with you to make sure that what you're listening to sounds appropriate. Now, for the most part, you don't want a very bright or overly detailed system. Although that can sound very impressive at the start, quite often after a little bit of listening, it can start to become a little bit fatiguing. So when you're going into the shop and they're playing some beautifully mastered bit of audio, it is very impressive, but then if you were to turn around and put a bit of punk rock on, it could just absolutely tear your head off and sound awful. So this is what I'm talking about, balancing it out. You wanna make sure that you don't just have a system that's overly detailed, but you also don't want one that's dark and boring to listen to that doesn't get your foot tapping. Now, some examples of uh, this would be, say if, if I was to talk about uh, a detailed speaker that sounds absolutely beautiful is something like a PMC speaker. Those things dig out a lot of information. So when you're pairing up to a PMC speaker, you don't want to be using an overly bright amplifier or very detailed amplifier. In other words, you don't want to double down. You want something that's more neutral to make it sound just right. Now to flip the coin on that, you also don't want to pair up overly easygoing or warm sounding equipment together. For example, the Lintons are such an easygoing, smooth sounding speaker, you wouldn't want to pair that up with say something like a Marantz, which has very similar characteristics. What will happen is everything will sound just fine, but it won't necessarily sound overly engaging. In other words, your foot's not going to tap and you're not going to get sucked into the music so much. It's definitely something to keep in mind when you're going through the auditioning process. Now, sometimes you get anomalies where you would think something on paper would work, but unfortunately it doesn't. To give you an example of that, the Roxanne K3 and Roxanne Black amplifiers are beautiful amplifiers on their own and pair up beautifully with a lot of other uh, speakers, but something like the Dyn Audio, which is actually a very linear speaker, would make sense. Roxanne's got this upbeat boogie sort of sound to it. Dyn Audio, are, like I said, very linear, uh, very accurate speakers, so you think it would work well together, but unfortunately in practice, it doesn't. Now, that's where someone like uh, a good hi-fi shop or us can certainly help you out there. We've been through all those amplifier speaker combinations. We basically, that's our jobs, right, is, is to curate these systems. We put them together, we listen to them, and we find out which ones work together. All we need from you is an indication of the sort of sound that you like. Do you like a cruisy sound? Do you want one that feels like, you know, it's got a good bit of get up and go and boogie to it? Or do you want something for a specific kind of music that you pretty much solely listen to, like jazz or classical, for example? Now, it's not just about getting the individual components to sound good together. 
it's also a little bit of data that you need to work out there. Now what I mean by that is how big is the room? If the room is quite large, chances are you're going to need a large speaker to fill that room. Now, if you're at the shop and you're listening and you're going through all this stuff, you might be listening in a small room and that amp speaker combo could sound beautifully together, but if you take it home and it's a completely different size room, it's not going to sound good there. Your bass is going to react very differently. You know, your mids and treble, if you've got different floor finishings or walls, it's going to sound different again. So when you come into the store, you come in here, the first thing that we always ask our customers is how big is your room? You know, what's the floor directing? Is it carpet? Is it tiles? Is it wood? Have you got much soft furnishings around the room? These are really important things because it'll make a difference to the kind of speaker that we would recommend. So uh, once again, big room, bigger speaker, small room, smaller speaker, you can get away with that. Now with that in mind, you're going to need to match up an amplifier that has the right amount of power to drive the speakers, or at least drive them as loud as you like to listen to them, typically uh, in a normal scenario. So there's no point in getting a great big speaker with big drivers and a very small output amplifier. It's not going to be able to control those drivers. It might sound really good at low levels, but when you turn that up, your amplifier is going to run out of steam and you're going to be let down. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about room sizes and the correct speakers, we actually cover this in another video. The link will be in the description below, so check that one out. Now, while we're talking about room sizes and speakers and amplifiers, it would be prudent if I didn't talk about the specifications of your speakers. Now, what I mean by that is, are they eight ohm, are they four ohm, and what is their sensitivity? Now, the vast majority of speakers are somewhere between 85 and 95 dB at one watt at one meter. That might not sound like a big difference, but let me tell you, if you've got a 95 dB speaker and an 85 dB speaker on a single amplifier, the volume level is actually more than three times louder on that 95 dB than it is on the 85 one. So, you're going to need a much more powerful amplifier with an 85 dB speaker than you are with the 95. Now, every three dB of difference is actually double the volume. Now, if you're somebody that likes to listen at very loud volumes, you will probably need a slightly higher sensitivity speaker and a more powerful amplifier to get to those levels. Something, say, around about a 90 dB plus and an amplifier with 100 to 150 uh, watts would be a good starting point. Now, along with uh, obviously the pairing between speakers and amplifiers, your source equipment is also really important. Now, by source equipment, I mean, you know, is it a turntable? Is it CD? Is it streaming? Each one of those can have their own sonic signatures as well, obviously. So it's just as important to get that part of it right. You know, think of it, uh, suppose, as, you know, once again, it's like baking the cake. Uh, you wanna make sure you get those ingredients right. Also, what can be really helpful is if you do have some equipment already, but you're wanting to upgrade just one of those pieces of equipment, uh, and you already know what you're getting out of your system, but would like it to be maybe a little bit more detail orientated, or you'd like the treble to be a bit more calm or something like that, uh, by simply talking to us, we can recommend um, a product that will bring that up or down or whatever you want within your system. Some examples of that would be, uh, for instance, if you want your system to get up and boogie a bit more, you wanna be a bit more involved in the music and you're into CDs, the Roxanne CD players are perfect for that. If you have a turntable based system and you just don't feel like it's vinyl enough, it doesn't sound analog enough, uh, something like a project turntable sound very analog. They're a bit warmer, they've got really strong bass. It sounds more like what you would think vinyl should sound like, uh, at least up until their mid range or mid high range stuff uh, anyway. Yeah, so there's some examples there, but we can certainly help you out in that department as well if you are just replacing one piece of your system.
Now I suppose we should talk about some of the combinations that I like in store and Dan will cover some of them as well. So I'll start with say something like uh, a combination that I think uh, works for myself and some of the other team members. I think Dan would agree here when I talk about Audio Lab and Wharfdale. Now the reason I think that they work really well together is because Wharfdale has a reasonably easygoing sound. It's, it's very mid-ranged focused. Yeah, things like instruments and vocals really sort of stand out more so than anything. And then uh, Audio Lab have a, a bit more of a, a linear sound where the bass is nice and strong and the treble is extended without being rising or dropping or anything like that. So those two um, products really work together. You get that warmth of the, of the, the wharf tail with that linear sound of Audio Lab and you just get this nice buttery sound that's... Um, that, that doesn't leave you wanting to hear, uh, you know, more detail or or you going out after, you know, an hour or so of listening to it. So uh, that's a really good combination. Now, Dan, what, what are some of the combinations that you've liked? Uh, for me, um, I, everyone says they listen to everything. I do listen to everything and that I find myself jumping from system to system here constantly based on the genre of music I want to listen to. Except in the case of the Roxanne Black and the Monitor Audio Golds. There is something about the way they work together. Mm. Um, they're just, I, I guess balanced is the term I would use. Uh, regardless of what I'm putting on, um, I want to get up and I want to move. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of like, like a magic, I suppose. Snappy, right? It's super snappy. And I, I like slap, I'm going to point out slap bass in particular, if you're a fan of slap bass. It sounds insane. <laughs> Through the, it's mm. very specific, but it's something that always stands out in my mind. Um, but I mostly spend time listening to headphones. I'm a head fire guy. And uh, my favorite pairing here is, I love the Meze Classics, the 99 Classics. And on their own, they do pair with pretty much everything because they're super easy to drive. But I'm a very detail and image focused person. And that means I always want to have a uh, really good DAC running through them. And um, either Audio Lab with their MDAC series or the Chord Mojo, they really kind of pull out an excessive amount of information. With some headphones, that can be a little bit much, but the classics, they kind of round that off and mm. make that into a much more easygoing and relaxing mm. listening experience. And uh, yeah, so... So like the Wharfdale equivalent of a set of headphones, right? It's like putting a right? big pair of Wharfdale Lintons on your ears, yeah. essentially. And it doesn't matter, again, like what genre of music you're throwing at it. And, and I throw some pretty heavy stuff at the classics, stuff that gets incredibly taxing on a lot of stuff. Mm. And, and it's fine. I can listen for hours without problems. So yeah. those, are, those are two particular combinations in here that I personally um, mm. love spending my free time with. Something interesting about what Daniel's just said there is the classics aren't exactly expensive headphones. I think, no. what are they, like $600 or five, 500 $500, there you go. Yeah. And he's pairing them up with um, DAX, sometimes at $2,000, sometimes at $1,000, and he's getting really good synergy there. So not always is it the case that, you know, you have to have expensive this and expensive that. Sometimes it just works out. Mm. Uh, and in this case, it's a really good example of that. So that's a pretty good segue to talk about um, sound signatures and what we personally prefer. For me, I like a pretty linear sound. Uh, I like it to be even across the mix. If anything, I like a slight bump in the mid-range. I find having just that, that little bit of a bump in the mid-range gets me connected to the artist a little bit more. Uh, I also really like it when the speakers sort of disappear and I'm not listening to a set of speakers, but just listening to my music. That's, that's what I'm chasing in a system. So to sum it up, I don't want too much detail, nor do I want bass that you know makes the room shake for days. I just want a nice balanced system with a little bit more in the mids. And the reason for that, I suppose, for me personally, is I do listen to a lot of uh, folky Americana-y sort of rocky stuff and a lot of the conviction in that music comes from the vocals and the vocals are, are really strong in the mids. So with that little bit bump there, you can hear the gravel, you know, you can, you can hear their emotions more. So that's my personal preference. Uh, Dan, what about yourself? 
Um, well, a little bit of context about myself. I make these videos. I've been doing production on videos for a long, long time now. And for many, many years, all I really listened to was the studio equipment I had. So I kind of got used to listening to incredibly flat sound, regardless of if I was working or pleasure listening. Since starting here and getting access again to I guess you could say like warmer equipment. I've kind of fallen in love with that sound because it's definitely created that separation between work life and uh, pleasure life and, and listening for, for pleasure. So I'm very much drawn towards the warmer sounds and I'm also very much, as I mentioned earlier, imaging is like massive. Uh, my brain goes like it ping pongs around with sounds like trying to locate exactly where they are. Um, and maybe that's just because of my work history as well. I don't know, but that's definitely the way it operates. So I'm kind of in this weird place where I like detail, but not too much detail because I listen to a lot of metal and a lot of punk, post-punk. That stuff tends to not be recorded really well. And uh, really detailed systems kind of ruin that sort of music for me. So I like things that kind of gloss over and mask a lot of those issues you might have in recordings and masterings. Um, I guess you'd say... It's generous speakers in that regard. And yeah, so I'm in this weird position where I like very, very warm sounds and I like very image, but not necessarily detailed focus, which sounds a little bit like a contradiction, but by mixing and matching mm -hmm. the right parts, which I've spent many, many hours doing, I feel like I've eventually um, managed to achieve that. And uh, also because of my living situation, and I'm sure there are other people out there in this situation too, I'm stuck near field listening. And that's been an entirely different learning experience as well. Mm. Um, engineering a system that sounds good at very low volumes. I, I've, I've found that to be like a really interesting and uh, pleasurable learning experience. I feel um, sometimes I can get more information sitting a meter and a half away from something and listening to low volumes than I can in a, in a large room on a lounge meters back um, mm. and I think it's just because of the way the information presents itself in that sort of space once you've got it set up correctly which can take months of very minute tweaking <laughs> yeah. once you've got it you feel it and you hear it and it's a um, it's a very different experience it's something I if you get the opportunity I recommend trying out as well well to, to, to counteract that Dan what you're saying there actually goes the same for traditional bigger hi-fi systems the uh within near field you do get so much more information because it's right there but what you've done is you've created a perfect triangular of the speakers to your ears and because you're so close you're getting that full bandwidth of the sound mm. uh, and going back to what i was previously saying about speaker size and amplifiers and things like that being appropriate for the room you can create that, that same listening experience as you do with Nearfield with uh, a bigger system. This is, this is what I was talking about, how important having the right size speakers are for your room. So, uh, yeah, definitely. If, if you go and you set your own system up to be a Nearfield listening experience and you find it's vastly different to uh, how it is when you've set it up in a traditional space, maybe you need to tweak it a little, but maybe you also need uh, slightly different equipment. Mm. Now, I know we've skimmed over a lot of this. It's a very deep topic. We could be here for days talking about all sorts of different things. But what we really wanted to portray in this video is that we are capable of curating a system to your individual needs. You know, we don't just get products here and sit them on the floor. When there's not customers in here, we're listening to the equipment, we're changing it around, making sure that we can create a really nice balance between those components. So obviously feel free to call us, uh, send us a message, uh, come in store, have a listen to the gear if you can, but if you can't, um, make sure that you reach out to us. We're here to help guys, and we wanna make your system sing. That's it for now. Thanks for watching as always. Bye for now. Thanks guys. Now, sometimes you get these anonymous, anon anonymous, God, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> And say the words, how do you say it? Anomalies. Ah, uh, anomalies.